Well, many thanks to Florian and to the organizers uh, for inviting me, making it possible for me to be here with you. Matti Apro and myself, we asked the question to Florian. Uh, uh, GCSF is on the program, but there are no details. So what is it you expect from us? Well, he gave us free reign. So I thought, since my job was to talk about biology, I thought I would give you a presentation on GCSF receptors and mutations. That shouldn't scare you, um, because we're, we're not going to uh, create the fears we created. Mati, do you remember, with the things that weren't real? So let's see what I have in store for you. Well, looking at the previous slides, I was a little surprised to find data from a few years back. And uh, it's not the use of GCSF, but the production by tumors uh, of GCSF. There's a whole series of studies. I'm not going to name them all in details. But you can see that some tumors produce GCSF. And these patients have leukocytosis. And by treating, we can actually reduce the leukocytosis. So it's sort of a tumor marker. But in the, the different studies that have been published over the last few years, uh, after, start, after we started to use GCSF as a drug, so there's a, a study on uh, thyrotoma. Uh, ter teratoma, sorry, with uh, one assumption, a hypothesis, that it might be an epigenetic-related problem uh, or a demethylation uh, problem, expression of a gene that will end up producing GCSF. But there's no clear uh, explanation. So there's something that, from a biological point of view, is a bit odd. So mostly uro urological, but so different hypotheses around the production of GCSF. Another aspect of GCSF that could be a bit more uh, worrying, here you have a, a study that was published uh, uh, by pediatric um, uh, experts, and they realized that when they looked at uh, cells, uh, cell cultures of neuroblastoma cell, uh, that there was a proliferation of uh, GCSF and that GCSF could actually enhance the proliferation of a subgroup of cells within uh, neuroblastoma. So from an onco oncological point of view, it's homogeneous. And as you can see here, uh, cancer cells in uh, uh, S phase uh, proliferate with proliferation, invasion, and so on and so forth. So we're talking neuroblastoma cell lines. Ex so those neuroblastoma cell lines expressing mRNA for GCSF. And they seem to respond to uh, the uh, uh, injection of G uh, GCSM. And there's another recent study where we proved uh, uh, receptor receptors in neuroblastoma cell lines, so in xenografts and tumor specimens, as well as in cell lines, which brings me to receptors and the receptor gene CSF3R, which is the one encoding the receptor for GCSF, and those. GCSFR plus cells express CD114. So it's sort of like a stem cell kind of environment. And that was detected in all neuroblastoma cell lines, all xenografts, and all tumor specimens. So I don't want to show you all the tables and charts with, uh, you know, uh, arrows uh, going all over the place. But that is the activation of CD114. Um, so it seems that there's an expression of a receptor. So why did I choose this topic? Because every time we're part of a discussion about uh, GCSF, 
uh, in the uh, EORTC symposia, for example, every year in March, there's always the same question, can GCSF induce uh, leukemia? Uh, and uh, I always ask a question saying, I'd like to draw your attention to the fact that patients receive uh, have received for 15 years now uh, since that indication uh, appeared they've received GCSF for 15 years and there's never been any malignant complications so if we look at chronic neutropenias uh, there's a model clearly pointing to neutropenia uh, per se so it can't be that it's the, GC, the GCSF dose that uh, 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 actually uh, uh, enhances the uh, chemotherapy. I just want to talk about isolated neutropenia because in the other cases, it makes sense to have complications. And in the neutropenic syndromes associated with other problems, these problems are not clear enough to make it possible to uh, monitor the neutropenia itself. Uh, since 1994, we've had a uh, register of isolated neutropenia uh, data, including severe congenital neutropenia, the cyclic neutropenia, as well as the systemic autoimmune disorder. So we now have a clinical model in which GCSF is used in the long haul first patient treated in my hospital was a lady who was pregnant who uh, had two septic abortions and we had a meeting uh, with the um, colleagues in Denver and she was the first to have ever received GCSF uh, whilst being pregnant so of course we had secured the agreement of the uh, uh, ethics uh, committee and she's still under treatment and she's doing fine so we've had people on treat uh, uh, on that kind of treatment for 15 years chronic neutropenias i'd like to say a few words uh cosmans uh, and cyclic neutropenia this is fairly recent uh, dates back to 2008, we were able to prove that there was an ELA2 mutation for Cosman's disease and for cyclic neutropenia. But strangely, in Cosman's disease, this mutation can be followed, it's not always the case, can be followed by a mutation of the CSFR, CSF 3R, so the CSF reception, and those are the patients that uh, usually have a leukemia, develop leukemia. So if we look at Cosman's disease first, this mutation codes for a protein, which is uh, elastase. Uh, so there are mutations which means that the protein is distorted and there are problems of uh, misfolding and that induces apoptosis. The CSF3R gene is the one coding for GCSF and in Cosman's disease there are some patients two to eight per year and that's the rate of acute leukemia for people who are on long-time treatment for a Cosman disease and who are treated with GCSF. They have that mutation, but Cosman's disease is an uh, um, autosome, but only Cosman described it. He described a family in Sweden in the 50s where there were 25 members of the family with that mutation. And the four survivors actually were seen again by a Swedish uh, team recently who confirmed the initial hypothesis. Uh, they had uh, frozen uh, material. Um, so these patients have a hereditary mutation that they've inherited from their patient and then they have a second mutation uh, uh, at the level of the gcsf receptor and that sequential acquisition of both mutations end up with an uh, ends up uh, um, ends with an, an mds or an aml and when there's that mutation in that receptor there's a subgroup of cells who are hypersensitive to GCSF 
and there would be a subgroup of cells that would be cloned and that would result in an MDS or an AML. That's the hypothesis. So that is the GCSF receptor. This slide kind of sums it all. I'm not going to go into the details, but here you have the extracellular part where the uh, ligand uh, uh, gets uh, is, is bound. And you have uh, the uh, transmembrane domain in the middle and the cytoplasmic region with all the variations in the expressions of mutations that have been described in relation with the corresponding diseases. So everything happening uh, in the green will end up uh, end in, in in uh, Cosman's disease, whereas in the transmembrane domain, it ends in a CNL. It's very rare. It's been described by a Belgian team that was able to describe a few uh, genes, but that uh, are not relevant for our discussion today. But they can also uh, be factors promoting an acute leukemia and in the cytoplasmic, uh, cytoplasmic uh, region, you have all these mutations that will create a, uh, an MDS or an AML. So you can see that these disease on the diseases on the right hand side are caused by a mutation in the receptor. Even though these patients, be by, uh, because of the, the definition of their disease, uh, have an ELA uh, gene. So there's a second mutation that is added on top of it. Why is it so? We don't really know. You may notice that I wanted to talk more specifically about Cosman's disease and the cyclic neutropenia, but you can't find them here. We don't know why the people having the same mutation in cyclic neutropenia do not have that second, do not develop that second mutation. We don't know the reason. Is there a, a, a balance or an imbalance that f uh, that f that actually causes that second mutation? But to reassure us all, because Mati, we're not using as a starting point uh, a uh, receptor uh, of the type of uh, erythropoietin. Um, so you may know this study with uh, Lyman and, and, uh, and others. It was a meta-analysis. So they looked at a great number of patients that were in a whole series of studies. So the studies were selected on the basis of specific criteria. And these patients actually had chemotherapy plus GCSF or with or no GCSF. So you have 6,000 patients on GCSF and over 6,000 without GCSF. So 43 developed MDS or AML. Uh, uh, against 22 without GCSF, which gives you a fairly significant p-value. And you see that mortality rate is lower uh, for the, the group with GCSF c compared with the control group without GCSF. The likely reason is that patients uh, on GCSF, why did they um, get GCSF? For two reasons, either to avoid cyclic neutropenia or to be able to maintain the dosage that was calculated initially. So the, uh, in that study, uh, if you uh, read it again, they've, uh, they checked on the dose intensity, but the dose intensity was uh, uh, totally respected for the group with GCSF, whereas it wasn't respected in the group without GCSF. So we can make consumptions. Is it uh, because GCSF was uh, uh, involved, or is it because the uh, chemotherapy was more intense? But um, thanks to the uh, calculated dose uh, intensity, mortality rate was lower. So to conclude, uh, fewer deaths with more chemo. The registry, well, uh, uh, our colleague, uh, Cal Valte, uh, started this registry and we have some patients in that registry, which was started in 1994. And 
you can see the number of patients in that registry and the number of patients treated with GCSF. Uh, so uh, the overwhelming majority uh, um, in the long haul. So, so cyclic neutropenia, Cosman's disease, autoimmune neutropenia, which is very rare uh, in a few cases of uh, autoimmune diseases, and Schwachmann. Um, so you see the number of uh, patients with these different diseases. So 57 patients with uh, an MDS or an AML. And as we might have expected, majority, 50 out of 57, have severe uh, congenital neutropenia, that's to say Cosman's disease. Three out of 37 have Schwachmann, had Schwachmann. So I'm going to give a call to uh, Karl Walter. There was an update in 2006 that showed pretty much the same data, but with fewer patients treated um, uh, on such a long period. And there was no patient with a, a cyclic neutropenia that developed an MDS or an AML. So what can we conclude from this? That GCSF makes it possible to maintain the, cal the initially calculated chemotherapy dose. It can happen. It's not very frequent. But when you have 400 patients with a cyclic neutropenia, a number of them will develop uh, an MDS. And uh, with uh, a, a patient uh, with uh, chronic neutropenia, you have to carry out a genetic assessment um, uh, and you look at the family also. Cyclic neutropenia remains the model that proves the uh, safety um, from a malignity point of view for G the, the, the safety of GCSF, uh, failing uh, other, uh, um, uh, well, um, uh, in the absence of any other factor. Many thanks for your attention. I know that it's not what Florian wanted, but he gave us free reign, so there you go. Merci beaucoup, Mario. Many thanks, Mario. Any questions for Mr. Di Cato? Everybody's reassured. I can't see any hands uh, being raised. Make a couple comments. Um, I think this is a very controversial area, both around the receptor and risk of GCSF. But I, um, I was part of that study with Gary Lyman looking over the randomized trials. And I think it's somewhat reassuring to me that um, over those thousands of patients, even though there is some excess of MDS and AML, it fits with the increased dose of chemotherapy delivery, I think, better than anything else. And, the magnitude of that is about 0.1 percent, but the, the benefit in terms of mortality is tenfold that. So on balance, even if there is some increased risk from the GCSF or just from increased dose delivery, at least uh, it looks like there's some therapeutic benefit overall in terms of mortality. I think at the present time, except for neuroblastoma, there's no controversy at literature. I just wanted to, to choose this topic because it comes up all the time, and uh, I wanted to just show that uh, there is no relationship between GCSF in patients who do not have other problems, be it mutations or uh, chemotherapy or even chemoradiotherapy, where you would expect even an, a larger effect. So uh, I think it's not a controversy. It's not like uh, the story we had with aporeceptors. Thank you.